Hello dear friends, uh, let us discuss uh, multi evaporator system uh, wherein there is a single compressor, single means only one compressor and the arrangement is as shown in the figure. Uh, we would be discussing a two evaporator case though we can add the number of evaporators from 2 to 3, 3 to 4 and so on. But for the conceptual understanding, uh, I always take an example of two evaporator system. Uh, two evaporators are at two different temperatures. So obviously with single refrigerant they would be at two different pressures. So let us talk about the pressures in the system. The highest pressure would be in the condenser, it is highest pressure and the lowest pressure would be the pressure in the evaporator 1. So this is the lowest pressure. And let us say that the evaporator 2 is at a slightly higher pressure than evaporator 1 and let me say that it is at a, some intermediate pressure, intermediate in the sense that it is between the pressure HP and LP. Uh, now uh, where do we fix the compressor because we want to fix only one compressor, we want to use a single compressor, uh, that compressor cannot be used between the intermediate pressure and high pressure. Uh, it has to be used between the lowest pressure in the system and the highest pressure in the system. It means that the compressor in such an arrangement has to be located between evaporator 1 and condenser. Uh, the refrigerant has to enter the compressor at the evaporator pressure 1 and it has to discharge the refrigerant at the pressure equal to the condenser pressure. So if this is clear to us that the compressor is operating between the lowest pressure that is the evaporator 1 pressure and the highest pressure that is the condenser pressure then we need to think of an idea of lowering the pressure of the evaporator 2 and bringing that refrigerant to the lowest pressure. For that as you see there is a back pressure wall provided. What does the back pressure wall do? It throttles the refrigerant which comes out of the evaporator 2 into the compressor. So the, uh, the letter M which I have used over here is the letter wherein the mixing happens of the refrigerant coming out from the evaporator 1. Let us say that mass is M1 and the refrigerant coming out from the evaporator 2. Let us say the mass is M2. So what happens at M is uh, let us uh, discuss it uh, in a slightly different manner. Uh, the refrigerant is entering the compressor at state 1. It is compressed to the highest pressure state 2. The refrigerant then enters the condenser which is uh, condensing the refrigerant and it comes out as a liquid, saturated liquid at state 3. And with the individual expansion wall, you expand the refrigerant from 3 to 5 and 3 to 4, 3 to 4 and 3 to 5. Uh, 3 to 4 is an expansion from the highest pressure HP to the lowest pressure LP in this expansion wall and 3 to 5 is an expansion up to the intermediate pressure okay, using this expansion wall. Now the refrigerant which is at intermediate pressure would enter the evaporator 2. What is the pressure of the refrigerant? The pressure is equal to the intermediate pressure. This refrigerant cannot directly enter into the compressor because the compressor suction pressure is equal to the lowest pressure. So what we need to do? We need to bring this refrigerant which is at intermediate pressure to the lowest pressure or the suction pressure. For that we employ a back pressure wall. What does the back pressure wall do? So it expands the refrigerant from the state 7 to the state 8 which is a throttling phenomena. At state 8 the pressure now becomes equal to the pressure at 6. So the pressure at 8 and pressure at 6 are now same and they are equal to the lowest pressure in the system which is the pressure equal of the evaporator 1. Okay, so now because the refrigerant at 8 and refrigerant at 6 are at the lowest pressure we can now mix them at M and the mixed refrigerant then enters the compressor at the lowest pressure. So
So if this schematic is understood, we would now try to uh, represent this schematic on a pressure enthalpy diagram. So look at this uh, pressure enthalpy diagram. We would look at the lowest pressure. So this is the lowest pressure. The lowest pressure, as I said, is the pressure corresponding to the evaporator, which is evaporator 1 or whatever you call it as. And this is the pressure corresponding to the evaporator 2, which is the intermediate pressure. The refrigerant exiting the evaporator 1, we will assume it as saturated gas. The refrigerant exiting the evaporator 2, we will assume it as saturated gas. So both state 6 and 7, they are saturated gas, dry saturated gas. The refrigerant coming out at 7 is at intermediate pressure. So we need to expand it to 8 in the pack pressure ball. So 7 to 8 process is the expansion or throttling in the back pressure wall. So which is an irreversible process hence shown by a dotted line. The refrigerant at 8 is now at the lowest pressure and refrigerant at 6 is also at the lowest pressure. So this refrigerant which is coming out of the back pressure wall which is the state 8 and the refrigerant which is coming out of the evaporator 1 which is at state 6 they are mixed. And after mixing, you get a new state, which is state 1. And the state 1 is slightly superheated. It is slightly superheated. That is the reason why it is shown in this superheated region. Now, how do we locate the point 1? So, for locating this point 1, we need to write an energy balance for the mixing phenomenon. So, energy before mixing has to be equal to energy after mixing assuming the law of conservation of energy. So what is the energy of the before mixing? So energy before mixing is the energy of the refrigerant at state 8 and energy of the refrigerant at state 6. Energy of the refrigerant at state 6 is M1 into S6 because this is the mass flow rate M1 and energy of the refrigerant 8 is M2 into H8, M, M2 into H8. So this is to be corrected to 2, M2 into H8. So M1 into S6 plus M2 into H8 will be equal to the energy at after mixing which is the state 1. Okay. So this state 1 enthalpy is unknown but we know M1, we know M2. Solving this we get H1. Once you get H1, we can easily locate the point 1 on the pressure enthalpy diagram okay so h1 we have located h1 we have located after solving the energy balance equation how do we locate h1 by solving the energy balance equation right and what was that energy balance equation this was the energy balance equation this is the energy balance equation but for solving this energy balance equation Finding H1, you need to know M1 and M2. How do we get M1 and M2? So usually the capacities of evaporator 1 and 2 are given. So let us say that the capacities of 1 and 2 are TR1, tonnage 1 and TR2. So in order to find M1, what we need to do is that divide this by a specific enthalpy across the evaporator 1 and divide this by specific enthalpy across evaporator 2. So this would give us M1, this should give you M2. However, we need to be careful of, about the units. This is in tonnage. So if you want this mass flow rate in kgs per second, we need to multiply this with 3.517. If you want this in kgs per minute, we need to multiply this with around 211 kilojoules per minute okay so one ton of refrigeration you all know is equal to about 211 kilojoules per minute or 3.517 kilojoules per second accordingly we can get m1 and m2 either in kgs per second or in kgs per minute okay so here i have found m1 in kgs per second and also m2 in kgs per second so this becomes my expression for m1 
and this becomes my expression for m2 once you get m1 and m2 you can then find h1 from this equation let us call it as equation 1 you can find h1 once you get h1 you can locate the point 1 on the pressure enthalpy diagram and then draw isentropic to locate h2 to find h2 so finding h2 is pretty simple on a ph diagram once your h1 is known right so you know h2 you know h1 and then in order to find the compressor work the compressor work could be h2 minus h1 which is a specific compressor work into m1 plus m2 so m1 plus m2 into h h2 minus h1 would give us the compressor work which is the total compressor work and if i take m1 and m2 in kgs per second i should get the compressor work in kilowatts so the coefficient of performance then is very simple total capacity which is the capacity of evaporator 1 and 2 together upon the total compressor work there is only one compressor here so it would be m1 plus m2 into h2 minus h1 so that gives us the method of solving the numericals which involves a system like this which kind of system is this this is a system of two evaporators but using a single compressor and the expansion wall arrangement is an individual expansion wall arrangement i hope that solving this numericals would not be now difficult for you thank you very much bye